The purpose of this isometric video is to teach you how to draw circles as an isometric. Circles are called isocircles for isometrics. I'm going to demonstrate how to do this. So watch this video after you have set up all the details of your isometric except for the circles. The center lines I've drawn here are based on the center locations of the circle. So I measured across the width and uh, depth of the part and I redrew them over here. This red line here, which I'll redraw for you, is based on the thickness of the part from the top to the bottom, which is the same as the thickness of the block. That information is right here, which as you can see is one half of an inch. That line is necessary for later in our lesson. So I'll pick the line command, snap to the intersection of these lines, type in 0.5. Okay, we'll come back to that later. Switch to object layer. The command you're going to be going to be using is called ellipse. We're going to spell out the word ellipse. The option you need is not visible at the moment. Hit the down arrow to choose the isocircle option. The down arrow is on the keyboard. After you pick the isocircle option, now you're ready to begin. The mouse says specify center of isocircle. You'll pick the intersection of the, t the red lines. You will notice that the isocircle is currently going in the wrong direction. So we cannot type the radius or diameter in yet. Hit the F5 key, the function 5 key, to change the direction of your isocircle, as you see here. There's three options. Once you get the correct length, you can hit the down arrow and choose diameter if you know the diameter of your circle. Or you would type in the radius. In our case, we need the diameter. As you see here, this is a diameter measurement. So, we'll type in 15 sixteenths, and there's our isocircle. I will review that as I draw the one at the bottom of this red line. Sometimes they're necessary, sometimes they're not. Depends on the thickness of the part. In our case, it may appear. Let's find out. The reason I'm not using this ellipse command is because these are different from the command I'm asking you to use. And not, it's not here either. So you type in ellipse. The option you need is hiding. Hit the down arrow and pick isocircle. Pick the endpoint of the red line. And then type in the diameter, 15 sixteenths. And I made a mistake because I typed in the radius. So I'll repeat the command. Hit the down arrow, isocircle, pick my center point. What I forgot to do, hit the down arrow to pick diameter first, and then type in 15 sixteenths. Enter. I could have also, of course, used the radius by typing in half the diameter, which is 15 30 seconds. The reason why I draw the second circle down beneath it is to verify whether or not we can see inside the hole. And in this case, you can. Which means we need to trim off parts of our isocircle. Pick trim, select the two circles, in this case isocircles, and then hit enter. Now pick the section you don't want, which is beyond the outside of the top isocircle, and there's our inside portion of our isocircle. So hit enter to finish the trim command and that completes that. As for the center line that's going through the part, if it's going through the part it eventually will disappear and part of this will go up as if it's a three-dimensional object. The distance for center lines for isocircles are about 
one half of an inch away from the edge of the part. As you can see, I'm just estimating here using the F5 key and not object snapping to different parts. To give the illusion of a half inch distance away, but this is what it would look like as you describe your isometric. Some companies prefer not to see any center lines and prefer to see the drawing like this. You can choose whichever method you prefer. That's the end of this lesson.